Welcome to Money Making Sense, the show that talks about all things money. Today, we're in Sundance, sort of virtually this year, as has happened last year as well. Today, I am joined by the producers of Calendar Girls, and that is Maria Luhufud and Luve Martinson. So welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. All right. So first of all, you're in Sweden You because you couldn't make it to Sundance because of the restrictions that got in place. Yes. So Yeah, exactly. We're in our home in the uh, suburb of Stockholm. Okay. Well, very. it's very beautiful over there. Uh, mm-hmm. And I kind of wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, dark. All right. But your film and it's uh one of the documentaries at sundance film festival it takes place in florida uh about a group of uh a women of certain age as we shall say Mm -hmm. um how did you you're in sweden how did you discover this group of women in florida uh actually we uh, maria's uh, dad uh, used to have a house in Cape Coral, which is the city where most of it is filmed. Uh, so we we used to go there like every year for, I think, 10, even more than 10, 15 years or something. So we've been there a lot on vacation. Um, and about four years ago, we went there on a longer vacation because we just had our second baby. Uh, he was three months old. So we just thought let's go to florida and stay there for a while while he's uh while we're on parent leave uh so that's when we were there we just we went to a, we were we were at a event called touch a truck in cape coral where they, where we were w- with our kids to look at uh like big trucks and fire fire trucks police cars and everything you can think of so they got to look at them and sit and honk the horns and everything. Our oldest son was like three at the time. And he yeah, was, he was crazy, crazy about, about cars. cars. So we were there and all of a sudden the, these women climb up at the back of a truck and start dancing. Uh, and we've, uh, we've never seen anything like it before. <laughs> uh, we were just very like fascinated, fascinated about by it. them. Uh, well, and uh, their fantastic energy and like that they are also that they take this take up this space and do these wonderful dances uh so we couldn't so, stop looking at them yeah so we just got curious and wanted to know more about them so that's how it started well was it because of their age because these are all women who are over 60 who are dancing or was it their costumes or combination uh of course it was their 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 age at first that we you don't see women of their age dancing like this in at least not in sweden i don't know if it's more common in the us but in sweden we don't see this kind so these older women doing these performances in these kinds of clothes so it was the whole thing i guess yes and it was it made us so very happy and fascinating and we thought oh what is this it was also a bit strange for us it's i guess it's somehow we get mixed emotions because i guess we just weren't used to it and we faced our own pre- prejudice yeah is that the word <laughs> prejudice yeah. yeah like we had that we have about older people that maybe should they be doing this or is this appropriate in their age that was <laughs> like um, the mixed emotion but that we didn't really, well, we just saw that in ourselves, that we had this thought, and that sparked the idea of mm-hmm. why are we thinking like this even? Is that like our, our mental picture of an older, the older women is like really out of date? Because, because of course they should dance like this, yeah. of course. It's just in our head, it was, we had an outdated image, yes. Yeah. Of what a wo- so that's older what woman sparked the idea of maybe, maybe we could start filming them and see what learn more about it and see what 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 they're about then well the one thing that i liked was they any money that they raised from their dances they were donating to the guide dogs and i think yes. some other organizations uh, possibly along the way but they were doing this 
I mean, obviously to keep themselves fit or energized and just moving, once you retire, sometimes you kind of just stop moving as we also saw in the film with some of yeah. the yeah. characters. Um, but I enjoyed the idea that they were being philanthropic at the same time. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And that's all very important. They talk a lot about giving back to the community and that's that's great. That's really great. And they shows Southeastern guide dogs at their charity and they've been sponsoring, I guess, 25 guide dogs so far. So I, that's great. I did miss in the film where, that we didn't actually see. I saw you were that they were handing out leaflets and talking about the guide dogs, but maybe it was just because of the timing you were there. What I did miss was not actually seeing the organization that they were helping to support. That was one thing I felt was missing in the film. Was that just, you didn't have an opportunity to, to do that? Uh, we, fi we filmed it and we absolutely did, but I guess it was so hundreds of hours that had to cut down to 83 so that's why and we also but, wanted the film to focus more on not not that that's not really the focus of the film the focus is more about being this age and more about their lives than it is about their charity or even if that's a very interesting thing as well but we really wanted have, the film to be like more into their uh, more about them and, yes and their life so that's why we had to leave stuff like that out just to so we, we can do the film too long. And that would have been a different film, I guess. Yeah, but we're really happy that, that could they also be a film, but could but, talk a lot about this now when they are yeah. getting famous. And they have been getting a lot more interest since the film, since uh, the film has been, uh, people have started writing and doing interviews about the film. They also gotten a lot of more interest about their charity and, and uh, as them as a group. So I think that's, that's it's really going to help them as well. So I have to tell you that I will never, ever be able to hear the Christmas song, Oh, Come All You Faithful, without seeing pink unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's good. <laughs> that was like amazing. I just love that. Um, yeah. But how long, do you know how long has this group been going? I mean, is this... I get that members come and go, but somebody had to start. Yeah, like how um, girls. How Kat long uh, Catherine, who's in the film, who is the leader, she's also the founder, and she did. She started the team sixteen years ago, so she's been doing it for sixteen years. And there are some other team members that's yeah. with this group for so long, yeah. but most of the women come and go. But yeah. it's a few of them that's been there for sixteen yeah. years. I want but Catherine's it's... body now. Not yeah. as a 60, 70 year old. <laughs> Come on. When you're 18 or 28 or even 38, everyone pays attention to you. And then just one day, it suddenly stops and you're invisible. On that. Yeah, but she's, uh, she's, uh, she's really something. She works out so much and she's really disciplined and she has this she does boot camp every morning at seven o'clock i guess yeah. so <laughs> she's terrific yeah gosh can you tell me um have you i'm assuming you've kept up with the people that you filmed so you know even after you stopped filming you know how their lives have been going yeah yeah some of them or most of them I yes guess. we're still, still in, in touch, touch with, absolutely yeah. If it's not giving away too much uh, from the film, can you, because I just felt, I mean, heartsick for the woman who had the gastrointestinal issues and she had to quit and she was constantly losing weight because of this. How, where is she? How is she at this point? She's, she's okay. She's, she's struggling with this disease, but she's, she's fine. She's able to live a full life and to work. She, she just can't dance, but she's still a part of the dance team in some way. She's making these t-shirts and some, she's, a, she's a really good dancer. So sometimes she helps out with the technique for, for the other dancers. 
and the new dancers. So she's part of the team, absolutely, but she just can't dance and do all the shows because yeah. is she still working? Because her work was also extremely physical. So yes, yeah, she yes. still works. She's able to work. Um, so that's but that's, that's great. she has to focus on the work. So that's why she can't do the dance. She can't really yeah. keep. She has to keep the energy. Yeah, but yeah. she's she's okay. So a lot of these women were already retired, a few or working because they had to financially. Uh, yeah. how, how do they pay? How do a lot of these members pay for the costumes that they are doing? Is it out of their own pocket or does some of the money that they raise go back to props and costumes and things like that? Yeah, I think that's the, I think they, all the costumes they do themselves uh like maybe they have to buy some things but they try to really keep the costs low yeah so like they, they save the money for for the charity yeah so they don't pay but it, sometimes they they make like the hats that fran is doing the hats and they i think sometimes they buy it from like dollar store and they buy something cheap and then then they glam it up glam it yeah. up themselves so so I don't think they have to spend that much money on it, no. um, but I think they, I guess they take it from the earnings they get. I think it's a bit different or sometimes someone buys a lot of stuff for. Yes, but they try to keep it. I don't so, think that's to save big, the money for the, yeah, for the dog. To... So what have you learned from seeing women of a certain age or the, you know, the social security set um, who are so active in their lives? It's so inspiring it really is we want to to get old <laughs> and to have more more freedom maybe if you if you can stay healthy then it could be a really fantastic time of your life when your kids are grown up and you don't have to hopefully you don't have to work that much and you can spend time with your friends again and do fun stuff so it's really made us not be so scared of growing older because you can really see how their lives are even maybe even better now or at least just as good as it has been before are you going to um, try to for like form one of these groups over in sweden and show um, society like this can be done yeah, yeah but, i would love that yeah well you can do whatever it, it doesn't have to be about dancing it could be about anything uh that you're just you should do what you want because everyone you isn't don't... fit to dance maybe some you like something else but the the point is you that you can just do whatever you want and don't feel that you have, your age has to stop you uh, or that you have to be like a professional of something just if yeah, you yeah, want to just do it do something it's just do it yeah i really enjoyed that uh theme about just continue to grow and learn new things yeah. even after you retire or yes. are over the 60 set 70 set um yeah some of those women in there even looked like they might have been in their 80s yeah the yeah. oldest one is 79 i think yeah when we filmed I when think, we filmed yeah. yes uh yeah but it's, that's the thing if you if you keep evolving you will you won't feel as old i think if you still you want to learn new stuff try new stuff it's your life is going to be fun until the end <laughs> yes. uh, have you heard um because some of the spouses weren't as supportive as mm -hmm. we may have wanted them to be since this film is getting so much attention have you heard about how their spouses are reacting now I don't know how many spouses that have seen it yet. No, it's still uh, it's we've just shown shown it to to the to girls, the girls in the film. Yeah. yeah. So maybe but after the a premiere. lot of them are supportive too. So I don't know. We we don't we don't really know. We haven't talked about that. No. But, we showed uh, it to the whole team a few year a few weeks ago, and but there were no spouses allowed in that, <laughs> in that screening. <laughs> we don't know we'll see yeah well i i know because when a lot of these women originally were married our society was different you know the woman always supported what the man did and you know you really weren't supposed to want a career at all let alone you know just do something that your husband wouldn't necessarily approve of 
um, times have changed, but sometimes the people's, you know, what they grew up with, their ideals, they haven't changed. And so it was really interesting to see the dynamic, especially in the one relationship that we concentrated on, um, how that evolved. And it, I mean, for me, I would be like, Hey, the husband's gone, man, I'm going dancing. I don't care what, (laughs) what he says. Um, but again, she didn't uh, grow up that way. So she has these She's moving toward that, but she is still rooted in her time when she grew up as well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and that's a big. That's the thing about what the film's about. Like, what kinds of expectations you have from yourself or from the society? Is most of them can be maybe from yourself on how should you behave when you're a grandma? I'm a grandma. Can I still dance in these clothes? Or can, I'm a wife. Or I'm a, I'm a wife. Can I go out dancing all the time, or do, should I, should I maybe stay home more? Or so you have like, like you said, it could be from that your, how your parents were uh, when they were older. Yeah. So I think that's a big part was interesting with the film that it 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 takes up these um, questions about, and that's the same thing with like we mentioned with our prejudice that yes. it's not really. It's not really, we understand that it's wrong to think that way, but still it's so in your program, your head is programmed with these images of how a grandmother, what a grandmother is. So we, it's time to start showing new, new, uh, new um, role models for how a grandmother can be. Yeah. I think we don't, haven't seen that much in films at least. Uh, portraits of women this age do they're always like stereotypical uh, a grandmother is a grandmother and yes, nothing and else only only a grandmother but you can uh, be both. but you can be a grandmother and you can be a uh a, a entertainer dancer or dancing out on on um, truck beds right well is there anything else you want us to learn or take from this movie that you have oh i thought i think we said it all like to get inspired and to not being afraid of getting older and to stay active and to yeah yeah and don't take yourself so serious then you just yes, try to have fun try to have fun yes yes I love that. Well, thank you so much to my guests. We have Maria Le Hufut and Luve Martinson. They are the producers of Calendar Girls, which can be seen at Sundance Film Festival. And do you have, has it been picked up by anybody else yet? Is it going to be marketed outside of Sundance? Um, yeah, it's, uh, we have an American distributor. So it's going to be in cinemas from May, hopefully, or May early June, summer. Yeah. And it's going to be in film festivals, hopefully all over the U.S. Uh, and all over the, the world, hopefully. Yeah, and <laughs> we have a cinema distribution in Sweden, so you can see it here in March. It's going to be premiered. And we have got a lot of interest from other European countries as well. So hopefully all over the world very yes. soon. Yeah. Great. That is awesome. So if somebody doesn't log in or sign up for the Sundance Film Festival this week, they still have many other opportunities. They will. Yes, they will. It's a documentary about women of a certain age who are, man, they're hoots. I loved it. (laughs) (laughs) So again, thank you to my guests, Maria Lehufud and Luve Martinson. Thank Thank you. Thank you. So nice being here. Thanks for listening. You can email me with any questions or topics you want to hear about at hkelly at ksl.com. That's h-k-e-l-l-y at ksl.com. And because this is Money Making Sense, you can subscribe for free on Spotify, Overcast, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast, and you'll never miss another episode. Thanks for being a Money Making Sense listener. Follow your common sense on the social media, Money Making Sense, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.